The activists who work at Kotaku are constantly pointed and laughed at by gamers, and of course their hypocrisy knows no bounds. But now we have the senior editor herself putting out articles, defending the acolyte and praising its horny fan service when she had previously attacked games like Stellar Blade for fan service. I have a few different things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, we have seen a lot of media outlets over the past couple of weeks trying to defend the Acolyte, and hey, if they genuinely enjoy the show, I'm glad somebody is because clearly most fans do not, judging by the awful scores on platforms like Rotten Tomatoes. But of course, we have the Kotakus coming out and trying to run damage control for Disney Star Wars. And now there are articles being posted by none other than Alyssa Mercante titled Star Wars The Acolyte is doing a different kind of fan service and it rocks. The Disney Plus series is leaning into an unapologetically horny part of the fandom while also expanding the lore in fascinating ways. Now my take will always be I'm fine with fan service and content. I'm fine with seeing strong masculine men, very sexy feminine women. I have no problem with any of this, but the issue here is the pure, blatant hypocrisy. She will put out articles like this, and many people at outlets like Kotaku will, praising the content they enjoy, while also attacking the content that they don't think should exist because it could harm people, like harm women, and paint them in a negative light and in a demeaning light. So it says the Acolyte, much like its main characters, resists definition and placement in Star Wars' decades-long legacy, and that is its biggest strength. The Disney Plus series ticks many boxes that the more traditional masculine fans of the franchise have been begging for for years. High Republic lore, rare, rare aliens, wild lightsaber fights, while also aggressively and unapologetically catering to the femme side of the fandom with a hot bad guy and heaps of sexual tension. Star Wars had done this in the past with one character alone, Anakin Skywalker. I mean, of course, we also had Luke, we had Han, but th those even aside... If you look at the way that Hayden Christensen played Anakin, it was clearly to appeal a bit more to the female gaze, which was perfectly fine. I loved his portrayal as Anakin. I love a lot of the male characters in Star Wars, but to sit here and say that the Acolyte is doing something different just isn't true. Yes, we've got men showing their muscles and being hunky guys, which is cool, and I'm down for this content, but the issue is the hypocrisy and how there are people just like this who will call out certain content and say it's not all right because they have deemed it offensive or they have said it objectifies certain people. And while, of course, this article primarily talks about this new villain and Star Wars being unapologetically horny, there is a snippet in here that talks about fan reaction. For years, I've seen Star Wars take big steps forward just to be forced backwards when Disney caves to right-wing reactionaries complaining about every Mary Sue black character or queer person that comes within a parsec of their beloved franchise. I've seen D.H. Luke Skywalker's pop up where they shouldn't. Boba Fett get an entire boring series, new pieces of media circle back on old Star Wars stories, and it becomes tedious. The Acolyte is something entirely different, and we always say this, it is fine if they want to try to create something new, but that doesn't mean that new automatically equals good. We are criticizing more with the Acolyte than just the fact that it's got black characters or it's got female characters or queer characters. Yes, we are sick and tired of seeing companies like Disney and creatives like Leslie Headland go down a checklist and ch check off every box they can in order to fill their diversity quota. But with this series, there are a slew of just things that have made it so that people are not enjoying it. We're talking about mediocre acting. I think that that might even be a little bit generous. There are some decent performances here, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, 
decent performances aren't going to carry a series that cost them nearly $200 million to make. We're also talking about, you know, uh, the long night in Game of Thrones scenes where it's super dark. The only thing you can see is the lightsabers. And while some of those shots would have been cool, shouldn't have been the whole thing. Then, of course, we just have some very cringeworthy dialogue and bad writing like the pronoun nonsense that a lot of people have been criticizing. We're talking about a slow of problems here and of course instead of just accepting the fact that hey this isn't gonna be for everybody they're going off on you know they're caving to right wing reactionaries you mean just a different side of the fan base that you personally don't agree with and it's fine not everybody has to agree on everything and yes maybe you love this series and that's awesome I'm glad you're enjoying it but that doesn't make our criticisms any less valid I had decided to make a tweet about all of this saying horny content made for her gaze equals good, horny content made for somebody else's gaze equals awful. We can't have sexualized female characters because that's objectification, but we can have sexualized human beings I like to look at because that's different. And in the past, of course, just back in April, she was going on tangents about Stellar Blade. I know it was a game that upset a lot of different people. I understand. I played it. I had a great time with it. But as you can see, she said they want their women to be virtually silent, overly sexualized dolls in video games that they can jerk off to without having to wash their ass or clip their nails or even show a single attractive quality. Now, is it a problem? to have sexualized female characters in a video game? In my opinion, no. As a woman, I love seeing very feminine portrayals of women, and I'm also fine with seeing strong women who don't, you know, fit the bill of the, you know, traditionally attractive female. Look at characters like Brienne of Tarth, for example. They, of course, did decide to uh, cast Gwendolyn Christie at as the role, and she is a beautiful woman, but at the same time, you know, Brienne of Tarth in the books was not, you know, deemed beautiful by any sort of standards, and people still love her character. Why is that? It's because we just want well-written characters who, yes, are appealing to the eye, sexy cells, and that should not be a problem. If she had never, um, you know, attacked Stellar Blade, then there would be no reason to call out her hypocrisy on something like the Acolyte articles. And of course, like I mentioned, she is not the only one at Kotaku who has attacked Eve and Stellar Blade and sexy female characters in the past. We know Claire Jackson does this uh, pretty often as well, of course, most notably and recently, May 24th. Uh, how to get Stellar Blade's new, very revealing outfits talking about you know, some of the conversation surrounding this game saying, no, that's not true at all. As expected, some people are thrilled to see more digital nudity while others are stamping their feet upset that Shift Up hasn't given them what they wanted, which is a free speech and digital tits. Y'all know porn exists, right? Again, we are not asking for attractive characters in video games and media in totality because we want to jerk off. We just want to see beauty. We want to see strength. We want to see femininity. We want to see masculinity. These should not be negative or bad things. Look at the shift from the, you know, quadrilogy of Arkhamverse games to Kill the Justice League. They changed every single character design and... Suicide Squad is a game people do not like for other reasons as well, but if they had simply marketed it with some of the previous skins and character models like Harleys or Poison Ivies, a lot of people would have, you know, paid a little bit more mind to it, and now that game is completely dead and they haven't even put out the second season yet, and of course... I had decided to post this tweet uh, about the, you know, horny content, and it did get quite a bit of attention. It's got, uh, you know, 2.3k likes, and apparently she took this a little bit personally as she had messaged me saying, damn, you really get your best likes and views when you're talking about me. How embarrassing for you, but at least she wished us a happy 4th of July, which was 
Very nice of her, I will give her that, but clearly, you know, she does want a lot of attention, which is fine. She's allowed to try to farm and fish for attention as much as possible, but when you're putting up articles like this, people are allowed to respond to them, and clearly, judging by the response to my tweet thread, a lot of people do just genuinely disagree with her takes and just her general hypocrisy, so it will be interesting to see how else the media, not just Kotaku, but the Kotaku's poly the gamers continue to try to damage control for Disney, Star Wars, and specifically the Acolyte. What other ways they try to spin it so they can write positive stories about this show? Only time will tell, but for now, that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.